So here we have another iron meteorite and uh, this has a very complicated name, I need to really read it up. It's Muononia Lusta uh, meteorite and it's uh, from uh, Scandinavia here, it's from the very north and uh, it's uh, a Swedish meteorite, one of the kind of really large ones here in the country and um, this uh, is something you really want to look at with me. And um, it's got uh, these uh, Wiedmannstetten patterns again. This is intergrown camosite and taenite. And taenite is the nickel rich metal and camosite the nickel poor one. And um, uh, as you might remember from the Cape York video, this is uh, exsolution. And it's believed that uh, on cooling the nickel rich and the nickel poor metals separate and uh, then the thickness of these lamellae gives you an indication about the actual duration of cooling. And uh, here, let's try with a little bit more light, you can actually see the beautifully intergrown patterns here. And this is an etched surface, so you see these patterns particularly well if you put a little bit of acid on it. It's not strictly visible on um, a simple cut, but uh, here this has obviously been a treated surface and it gives these triangle type patterns and uh, I personally think they are looking rather beautiful. Now these iron meteorites, they would be not only rich in iron, um, they would also have potentially over 20% of nickel in them. So uh, this is a real rich resource for nickel and they could have several percent of cobalt. Cobalt being one of these elements that we need desperately for battery production and currently more than 60% of all cobalt is sourced from a single place on the planet and that's the um, um, that's Congo and uh, with all due respect uh, working conditions and uh, uh, mining conditions in Congo are not as well regulated as in many other places of the world so um, and it also is almost um, a monopoly there so uh, this is ripe for exploitation of all sorts so if we find alternative sources for cobalt that would be really really useful for our society particularly in the advent of electrification of the traffic and all sorts of other industrial applications. So I'm going to turn the meteorite around now and uh, because it's edged I'm not supposed to kind of uh, touch it with my bare hands so I'm using gloves now and I have to treat it rather carefully. So here this is the other side of it so it looks less impressive on the outside um, but it's very very heavy and um, here we uh, see a bit of rust on the outside so this likely comes from interaction with uh, the hydrosphere and the atmosphere and uh, we see some shiny metal material of course there on that side as well. So up here we can see a little bit of the uh, uh, lamellae, the Wiedmannstetten type lamellae and uh, of course on the cotton edged surface they are a lot more photogenic. So I'll turn the specimen around again. It's got a bit of a crack here in the lower part so I better be careful before I destroy it. So but uh, really it's, it's got quite some mass so this is a very very dense material and uh, this would have been derived from the very inner portion of a little, uh, presumably little uh, planet or a planetesimal and uh, there is more of this material out there in the asteroid belt and this would be a prime target for our space mining campaigns that might or might not take place in um, tens to hundreds of years from now but I think um, given the cobalt desire of the industry this would be something that many companies would be quite keen on to acquire.